Hello and welcome to lesson 1-1, one, one, points, lines, and planes, oh my. We're going to be talking about uh, points, lines, and planes today. And here's just a little quick look at your, your common core state standards that this lesson covers. And we'll be doing some modeling with mathematics and attending to precision. This is something we're going to talk about a lot this year. So just a little glimpse of our standards uh, that we'll be covering. Now, before, in math, you've used basic geometric concepts and properties to solve problems. Now, we're going to identify and model points, lines, and planes. We'll, we'll, we will also identify intersecting lines and planes. Here's a list of the vocabulary terms that you should have definitions for already in your vocab notebook. If you have not done that part yet, you need to stop watching this video right now and do the vocab using your textbook. That has to happen before the video because I'm just not going to cover all of those vocabulary terms in this video. I will, however, use these terms frequently, so you need to know pretty much what they mean already. But these are the list of things you should have in your vocabulary notebook with adequate definitions for each one. Now I will tell you, undefined term is kind of tricky to have a definition for. You might need to look that one up in the glossary, but the rest of these you can get right from the reading starting on page 5 of your textbook. Starts on page 5. Alright, now if you have these done in your vocab notebook and you are ready to start with your note packet, let's go ahead and take a look. Here are the definitions that you saw in that textbook, what a point is, line is, and plane. A point's just a spot. It's a location. It has no shape or size. A line is when we string a bunch of points together in one pathway. It has no thickness because points have no size, but it does have a path that it follows. And then we talk about a plane as any flat surface that extends forever in all directions, in two dimensions, that is. So, Okay, we can go left and right, up and down, or any combination of those dimensions, and we get a plane, and it looks kind of like a sheet of paper. We will represent our planes like a parallelogram. Think of a sheet of paper leaning back against something, and it kind of gives you an idea of what a plane might look like when we draw it on our paper. All right, naming these is very important. If you did not put these parts in your vocab notebook, that's okay. You have them in your notes, but I think you should highlight at that point then how we name and give an example of these. So we name a point by using a capital letter that goes with it. And so we'd call it point A. We name a line by using the letters representing two points on that line or a lowercase script or cursive letter. And so we could look at it like this. Line M, line PQ, or just put PQ with a line symbol above it. Line QP or QP with a line symbol above that. These all represent that same line. And then a plane is named by a capital script or cursive letter and three points that are not on the same line. And you'll know from your vocab that points that are on the same line are called collinear. So three or more points that are not on the same line are called non-collinear. And so here's an example of how we could label or name that plane. These all refer to the same plane. All right, let's take a look at our examples then. In example one, we're going to name lines and planes using this figure. So I want you to try and name a line containing point N in this figure. All right, now that you hopefully have something written down, if you don't, pause the video to make sure you get that down. Let's name a line containing point N, see if it's the same one I have. Well, N is on this point here. That is called line L. That's a script or cursive L there. All right, so I can say that a line containing point N is line L. It may not be the same way you wrote it, but it refers to that same line. You could have called it line NO, line MN, line MO, line OM. Okay, anything that refers to this line will have point N on that line. Let's talk about a plane containing point P. Point P is not on line L, but it is in plane A. Okay, so there's my script A. You could have drawn a cursive A or any other curly letter as long as it's capitalized. All right, let's talk about example two. In example two, we're to name the geometric shapes modeled by this picture, and we're referring to points, lines, and planes. So let's talk about points first. All right, and just to give you some possible answers we could have here. We have points. We have point A, B, C, and D. All those points, parts of the flower, parts on the ground, are our points. A, B, C, and D. The tip of the paintbrush is also a point.
Okay, even though we don't label it, I could call that. We could assume that that maybe is touching point A there. But the tip of a paintbrush is an example of what a point would be. Let's talk about lines. We have the ground, line BC, which is the ground the flower is growing out of, or the earth where the flower pot is, maybe. We have line AC, even though it doesn't extend forever, it could. Line AC, represented by the stem of the flower. Those are some lines we have. Then the plane, notice they don't have a script letter, so I'm going to have to use three non-collinear points to label the plane. I'm going to call that plane BCD. Okay, BCD is our plane, and that is a representation of the canvas that this portrait is being painted on. Sorry, not a portrait. It's a still life. All right, so there's your example two. Now, example three, I apologize. It's split right in the middle of the page, and so we've got example three A on the bottom of one page and example three B on the top of the other. So I went ahead and took a screenshot like this to make it a little more clear. Also, I believe part of your diagram is actually cut off the page. So now you see how it should look. Here's what we have. We have a plane, ABC or ADC or any way you label that plane. Rising up from the plane at each corner are these other lines. And so we need to first name four coplanar points. Well, coplanar means they're all on the same plane. The only plane that has all four points listed is this base here, ABCD. So we're just going to list A, B, C, and D. Then it says name three lines. There's lots of lines we could use, but the lines have the arrows. So I'm going to pick A, E. Imagine E is some point up here above the page, and A, B, C is the page itself down here. So A, E is the line I'm going to use as my example. We could also use many other ones there. Why don't you think of some more? All right, let's move on to example four. But first, let's talk about this. If two lines intersect, then they intersect in a point. If you did your reading, you know that when two lines intersect, they intersect at a point. All right, but if two planes intersect, imagine I take this piece of paper and I am able to intersect the other sheet of paper. Where they intersect is a set of all those points in that path. That's a line. So two planes intersect in a line. All right, so let's sketch some figures. This is where your creativity is going to come in. Okay, I want you to try and do these drawings. Pause the video if you need some more time. But go ahead and try and do these drawings based on what you're given there and then see what they look like. If you get stuck, you can always click play on the video and see what I've done. All right, we should get something like this. I've got two lines, M and L, intersecting at point A. Now, it doesn't have to look exactly like that, but we should have two distinct lines, each labeled with an intersection point that's also labeled. All right, for part B, you should get something that looks a little bit like this. I've drawn plane R. Again, if you're having a hard time drawing a plane, just draw a parallelogram. It looks like a rectangle that's laying down on its side a little bit. And we've got a line T that is in plane R. Now, if I were to talk about a, a line intersecting a plane only at one point, that's an example of a line that is not on the plane, but through the plane. And so in our next drawing for part C, you'll see that applied. You'll see in my plane T, I've got two lines intersecting at one point B, but only one of the lines lies on the plane. V lies on the plane, and here's how I know this line W does not lie on the plane, because this dotted line represents part of the line that is behind the plane, or on the other side, solid line is a part that is above. So imagine this going down through this piece of paper at that point. Okay, last example. We're going to interpret some drawings here. We're going to talk about all these questions looking at this figure. Let me try and give you a basis for this figure. We have a plane M. We have a line that intersects the plane at one point, so that's why they're using a dotted line there. All these dotted lines are behind the rest of this figure, but XT is a segment that's on plane M, ZT is a segment that's on plane M, and YT is not on plane M. It's extending 
through the plane. So we have this triangular solid figure here, looks kind of like a triangular pyramid coming up off the page. So we're going to be able to identify these things this way. Why don't you take some time, pause the video, and try and answer these questions and then see what we get for our answers. All right, I get that there are four planes. We have plane M, then the front triangle is another plane, the one on the left is another plane, and the one on the right is another plane. So that's a total of four. So many points are not collinear that we could name. Well, we just have to name three. That means we're going to name three points that are not on the same line. The only three, I'm sorry, that are on the same line. I read that wrong. Collinear. Well, the only three we have that are collinear are Y, Q, and Z. All right, let's name the intersection of plane X, Y, Z and plane M. Well, X, Y, Z is this front side of this triangular pyramid, and plane M is this paper. Well, they intersect at line X, Z. So I'm going to say they intersect at line X, Z. And lastly, at what point do P, R, and T, Z intersect? Those are two lines, so they intersect at a point. P, R, and T, Z they don't appear to intersect at all. If I were to even continue this, this is on one plane, this is not on the same plane. So these do not intersect because they are not on the same plane. And when two lines are not on the same plane and not parallel, we say that they are skew lines. A little bit of free vocabulary for you. All right, that concludes our notes for Lesson 1-1. One, one. Feel free to start the assignment if you would like, but you don't have to. We will start that in class. And make sure that you uh, go back over this. If there's anything you weren't sure of, go back in the video and watch it again. You can also look in your book for any of those extra examples that they list there, read through that, and it should make a lot more sense when you show up for class this Tuesday.